note, we've got $25 from Braylon, who says, Thank you for putting on this wonderful event and having a great distraction while I'm working from home. And with that, we are ready now for Metal Gear Ghost Babble with Plywood. Take it away. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm Plywood, and I'm going to be running Metal Gear Ghost Babble on Game Boy Color for all of you. Uh, I'm joined here with Jaguar King. Hello, hello, everyone. I'm Jaguar King. Nice to meet you all. I'll be commentating with Mr. Plywood here. That's right. And uh, we will be doing very hard, which is true to its name, in five, four, three, two, one, go. Good luck, buddy. Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna need it because this is not an easy run. So this is Metal Gear Ghost Babble. Uh, if you were in the West, it was called Metal Gear Solid on Game Boy Color. I ran the other Metal Gear Solid earlier in this event. So very fitting that we're running the other game called Metal Gear Solid, but it's not really Metal Gear Solid. We'll get into all that. Um, this is the last 2D Metal Gear game ever made, released in the year 2000. Uh, and it was released based off the recommendations of Konami of Europe, who wanted a portable Metal Gear Solid game. So this is what the Japanese team came up with, Metal Gear Ghost Babble, as it's called in Japan. In the first stage, we're mostly just going to be going up. Uh, we're going to see my first set of knockouts for this guard. Three punches will knock out a guard in this game. Uh, we'll be going over the various differences between this game and the 2D Metal Gear games, which have been shown at GDQs in the past. But for the most part here, we're just going to be dodging guards very sneakily, because we are going to try and get the Big Boss rank, and we'll explain all the aspects of Big Boss in a little bit here. But this screen's pretty cool. Just a little delay. And we're going to squeak by all these guards like that. Boom, thread in the needle and we're done with stage one. Fairly simple stage, but it only gets harder from here. Uh, as you can see, this is a stage-based game, so at the end of every stage, you get a ranking, you get your time, how many alerts you got, or times they saw you, rations used, and enemies killed. Uh, the in-game timer in this game is actually really good. Um, it removes loads, it re removes lag, uh, removes menus, codecs, so it doesn't matter what version of the game you play. It's all very fair in that sense. But the reason why we play the Japanese version is because in real time, we save about five minutes from the script. That's because of how condensed the uh, Japanese script is compared to, say, the English language script. Mm -hmm. That is actually correct. That's why uh, we play uh, on marathon settings. It's better to play the Japanese version because the RTA timing is faster. However, it doesn't matter which version you want to play, whether it's the US version or the Japanese version, because we usually use IGT time. And the way the IGT time actually works is actually amazing here. Um, it pauses during cutscenes, Kodak calls, uh, menuing. And it's actually definitely great. I mean, that's why there's no difference IGT-wise, but definitely there's a huge difference RTA-wise. That's right. So coming up here, we are now entering the Fortress Galloway. And you're going to notice throughout this run that I'll be using punch buffering to pace myself out. That's because uh, it's much easier to measure out time by punches than by, like, spinning around in place or whatever. So... And cycles, and cycles when it comes to the guards, is a huge component of this game. A lot of cycles in this run are very tight. You need to know what your opportunity is, so measuring out your opportunity that way, very important. Also, uh, worth mentioning that we're playing on very hard difficulty, and we're going to try to aim for big boss rank. And the requirement for big boss rank here is to beat the game in under two hours with less than 25 kills, five alerts, and one ration use. For the first time in the series, continues do not matter. We can actually die as much as we want here, and continue will definitely uh, not affect the rank itself, and that's actually definitely going to help us a lot, especially later in the game during uh, doing death abuses and stuff. That's right. 
as I took a bite of my uh, personal ghost bagel. If you got a bagel, this is a great marathon for it. This, this run, we're all about the bagels. If you got the cream cheese, I don't. But if you got some cream cheese, feel free to spread it. Anyways, yeah. uh, we have now picked up the level one card. We're going to need that to get out of this fortress area. And I'm going to sneak by this guard by going just outside of his uh, eyesight range by going down to the fence. We're gonna crawl underneath this broken fence here. Make our way around. Uh, thankfully we know where we're going. If you didn't know where you were going, likely you would get pretty lost here, but knowing where we're going and what to do on every screen is very key in this run. And boom, we went to the hidden alcove to go down this ladder, and we're gonna head down into the sewers, which is stage three of 13. And things are going pretty smoothly so far. The first two stages are pretty simple. But stage three has a pretty cool trick uh, right near the start uh, called the water skip. But first we have two rooms that have very tight cycles in them. Uh, it's quite easy to get caught in the first screen and the third screen if you're not confident in your movement. I would say that this game is very memorization dependent because you need to know what direction to hold and on every screen to hit certain cycles. So yeah, you need to recognize the lines that you're actually gonna take. Otherwise, you're gonna get risk getting spotted by the enemies. And especially early on, we have like, uh, our health is really, really low. And you can get damaged like two, three times and then you're gonna be dead. So here, Plywood is taking this particular line to avoid getting spotted by these soldiers and the camera. That was actually beautifully done. Thank you. Yeah, you're constantly threading the needle on that rat screen to avoid getting spotted. It's, uh, it's a bit tricky. But coming up is the water skip or wave skip. And the whole thing here is that we're gonna have these big water waves because there's flooding. <clears throat> so flooding on a river and it's coming down into the sewer. So we need to time our movement just right so that when the second wave approaches, we cross the screen as it's crossing the screen. That way we completely avoid getting carried by the water. Here we go. Yeah, this is actually a difficult trick. We have like 10 frame window to do this. Plywood is doing a buffer movement by punching while moving, doing the line, and that, he I successfully it. did it. Yeah, the, the second wave is actually hard. Uh, there's another wave that we're going to skip, which is the fourth one, but that one is actually quite easy as long as you move uh, quite fast and not stop, and you should be able to clear it correctly without any issues. Yeah, I realized that I uh, was on the ladder for a little bit longer than it usually was, so I delay, I reduced my delay, and I just met the window. It's a, it's a pretty tough trick when you're learning the game, but eventually you kind of just get it by feel the timing window. Uh, and there's a lot of different ways to approach that water skip. For instance, Jag, he does it purely on the visuals of the radar, uh, like with the water going, so. You just once you see that that visual cue you just go so a lot of different ways to approach it uh, we're now out of the sewers i picked up the cardboard box yellow uh, that's going to be pretty important in this stage and others to be stealthy and uh to enjoy some conveyor belts later on as we enter the watchtower we're looking for our contact chris jenner who's in a red cap but thankfully we know where she is. We don't have to go looking for her in the maze. And knock on the wall twice here. Distract these guards. Jack, could you explain why knocking can be a little bit weird? So yeah, enemies uh, do not react very well to the uh, to the knock. Sometimes you might end up getting some weird RNG happening when that happens. So you need to pay attention. For example, this upcoming guard, sometimes he turn around as the way he's actually uh, 
facing and spot view uh, as well. Now, whenever a noise happens in this game, they have a chance to look around and stand still. Uh, that can happen multiple times while they're going investigating a noise. So every time you do a noise strat in this game, you gotta be very careful since the pattern can get a little bit messed up. Uh, you might be noticing that I'm punching guards around corners. Uh, this is what we call corner punching, of course. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. Uh, whenever you punch at a corner, your attack gets extended as far as its hitbox is concerned. Uh, this is going to be very useful throughout this whole run because uh, being able to knock guards out around corners is very stealthy. Um, the only thing about the corner punching is that it works both ways. Guards can corner punch you as well. So... Oh, I missed the button! <laughs> it's so big, yet I, I completely whiffed it. It's okay, though. Uh, you're going to notice while I'm on elevators that I'm going to pause uh, to skip the animation of the door opening and closing. Uh, that's because the in-game time stops when you're on that menu, but the animation still plays. So over time throughout all, all the elevators that we take in this run, that's going to save quite a bit of time. Here we use the box to avoid getting spotted by that guard. And then we're going to continue forward. And in the meantime, we're going to continue until at the wall here and get distracted another guard by knocking to the wall. This will delay his movement, allow a safe passage into the next upcoming door. Yep, knocking disrupts that guard's uh, cycle because he can't access that position, so he just restarts his uh, pattern, which is really good. It doesn't inter interfere with our movements. Now I'm going to pull out my fogger because Snake was smoking e-cigs in 2000. Okay, that movement right there was very important. Uh, I just took an alert in that uh, laser hallway because going through those lasers as intended, it's a real struggle. But when a guard comes in, if they see you, that's considered a second alert or being found as the game calls it. So, the way Ghost Babble guards work, their AI, it's very simple. They will attack in whatever direction you're holding. So if I'm holding up left, they're going to attack up left. When that guard entered the room, he attacked up left because I was holding up left, and he didn't actually see me at all. When he entered the room, he just immediately turned. So that saved me an alert. And that, that took one second, but it took about 30 seconds to explain, because this game is deceptively detailed for a Game Boy Color game. Um, but yeah, that whole changing direction to alter how guards attack you is going to be very key in this run as well. Also, uh, we forgot to talk about the story here. Our goal is Snake is actually infiltrating this uh, area in order to rescue uh, the a kid scientist name, named Jimmy something. I don't remember. Jimmy I call him Tim. Jimmy Harks, yeah, he is the one who actually built the Metal Gear uh, called Metal Gear Gander uh, on this game. And we are pretty much our goal to go in and rescue him and destroy Metal Gear as well. And to be yeah, honest, so I don't know much about the story because I speak on the game. I do not play the story. <laughs> well, uh, basically, this game is a what if, what if Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake never happened? Uh, the 2D game, not Metal Gear Solid 2. People tend to get that confused. Metal Gear 2, colon, Solid Snake. Uh, this is an alternate sequel to the original Metal Gear on MSX. Uh, this fortress that we're in, the Fortress Galloade, is built on the remains of Outer Heaven. Uh, and that fact becomes very important in this story because, in part, it's about what happened uh, during the events of Metal Gear 1. Once again, using the box to avoid being spotted, waiting for the camera to pass. Again, we are not going to go through this room as intended. It's very slow. So we have five alerts for Big Boss. Uh, we've now used two of them. Um, that's part of the route. We have one freebie alert, but I'd like to keep that freebie alert until the very end of the run uh, because there's another laser room that I'd rather not have to go through as intended. 
here. We are using the box to avoid getting shot by these turrets. Uh, stage four has our first boss fight. So I want to be at max HP because three hits and I'm dead. And uh, the first boss is not a walk in the park at all. Um, as we're going around this spiral and we're doing the watchtower, I think we have time for a couple donations. All right, we've got $10 from Iridescence. It says, Ghost Babble at GDQ. Well, 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 suddenly kickball seems a little silly, doesn't it, Plywood? <laughs> Hashtag MDSR. For all those who are wondering, that's in reference to a, an ad for this game. Uh, <laughs> when you're in the middle of a firestorm, kickball starts to seem a little silly. Um, yes, thank you, Yuri. Got five dollars from Battle Moose who just says, I like trains. Trains are great. I've always loved riding trains. I'm in favor of trains. Pro train! <laughs> um, so Chris is leading us out of the tower. Uh, this this strategy is pretty neat. We're going to wait until this guard turns to the left, and then I'm going to knock. Boom. Just timing out our uh, cycle here. Knock this guard out. This is great, so we give that guard the slip. Now, knocking out a guard takes about a second, which isn't a whole lot, but uh, if we can avoid knocking out guards, we always try to. And sometimes it may seem like it's a good idea to knock out a guard, but the time can work out in your favor just letting them walk by, so. And now we are exiting the tower, and we're gonna go outside, which is the really tough part of, of stage four is this outside component. Uh, Chris is going to go to the power plant, which we will unfortunately be going to later. Uh, and we are going to go to the east to the barracks to go rescue Jimmy Harks. But this outside portion has a new enemy and some new challenges as well, uh, as far as our lines are concerned. Oh boy, that enemy is vicious. You're going to see what I mean in a little bit. As we continue through the barracks. Oh, wait, this is not the barracks. Whatever. So, coming up is this weird puzzle here. Uh, based on the pattern, based on the soldier, the button that he's going to end up pressing, we're going to end up with a pattern, and we need to push the buttons on these uh, computers in order to open the door here. It's a set pattern, so as long as you know which patterns, and you will be able to solve this puzzle quite easily. I got my little post it note here of all the solutions. Um, so this is solution one. So I'm gonna press the first button, the third button, the fourth button three times to shift the doors into the position to remove them. And boom, all done. And now we are going to do the hard part, <laughs> which oh yeah, uh, these dogs have amazing range. They can sense you, they can smell you. So they kind of have like a diamond pattern. So you got to be very careful, and we don't want to activate those birds because if a bird gets activated, that's an alert. Yeah, these dogs are vicious. Uh, they have a huge hitbox, and they deal a huge amount of damage. Remember, we are we are at very hard, which means. Uh, three hits and we are dead, and we do not want to take a hit. Just we are about to fight a boss fight coming up soon. Uh, and we're going to head to the right side here. We're going to pick up um, a safety ration, which is inside this truck. And then we're going to pick up some ammo, grenades actually. It's going to be our first weapon that we're going to have to use uh, against the upcoming boss fight as well. And we're going to continue forward. Uh, we're going to enter the screen. There are going to be a bunch of dogs here. Uh, Plywood is doing uh, buffer punches to time our movements, pick up more grenades ammo, and then we're gonna head to the left side of the gate here. And then we're gonna push the button, and it's gonna troll you and open the other side of the door, so we're gonna have to go to the other side and enter the, uh, the boss uh, fight area. Taking the specific line to avoid getting alerted by the dogs. Dogs will not count as an alert, but they will attack you if they found you. So 
need to be careful here. More buffer bunches. And they'll kill you in like five seconds. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> yeah. Also, you notice that there is this red boomerang flying around. That's the boss fight. That's Slasher Hawk that we're about to fight. And take more lines. These lines are really specific, by the way, guys. Any mistake, and then you're gonna get spotted and trigger an alert by these weird birds. And that's it. That was actually beautifully done. So Thank we're you. gonna stock up on ammo here, and then we're getting ready for the, our first boss fight, Slasher Hawk. And he is uh, an Australian assassin that uses boomerang and his big hawk on his shoulder here. This boss fight is by far the hardest boss fight in the game. Keep in mind, since we're in very hard, we will die in like three hits. So we need to be careful around him. And we're going to use the grenades that we've just picked up earlier uh, in order to do damage to him. And yep. <laughs> There's one thing I forgot to do, which I'm going to do right now. And I'm going to save because there is a super special secret... Uh, oh uh, boy, Australian yeah. attack this guy could do against us that uh, I do not want to ever see. So it's we're saving just in one. case. And so, now yeah. we have to deal with the zigzag boomerangs and the red linear boomerangs. They always return to his right or your left side, so you can always try to avoid them that way by pacing out your movement. And now, phase two, the bird is on us, and this bird is the scariest thing in this entire game. Yeah, this bird is random. He moves in an unpredictable manner, and we need to avoid getting hit by him. Sometimes he hits you twice, sometimes he hits you even he's further than you. And in the meantime, we're gonna keep on throwing grenades at Slasher Hawk, uh, lowering his health, while avoiding the bird, the eagle, as he's flying all over the screen. I mean, look at this pattern. Yes. That's one hit, that's unfortunate, but that's the fight. That was actually really, really beautiful, Slasher Hawk. That's actually amazing. Good job, buddy. Thank you. That is by far one of the hardest fights in the game because of the lack of HP and um, for big boss rank, you can only use one ration, and I'm using that ration specifically for a stage later on. So if I use a ration in this fight, big boss rank would be completely over. So uh, not losing it here is, that's one weight off my shoulders, but this game, it got, it's got all the surprises. It keeps you guessing, uh, it keeps you busy, it keeps you a little bit stressed but we're gonna keep on going, folks. Also, that super secret Australian attack we were talking about, he literally crashed the game on you. <laughs> we're not joking, he literally crashed the game. I mean, if you do not believe us, just watch our VODs. It happened to me, it happened to Plywood. It's actually kind of funny, actually, I mean, when it's actually happened. Yeah. <laughs> the, when the phase of the fight changes, the camera pans the wrong way, and then the game just crashes. Uh, it's pretty great. So now we are in the barracks. We're here to rescue Jimmy Harks, but to do that, we have to uh, do a variety of tasks. We have to get some new boxes, we need to upgrade our level card, and we need to pick up some C4. Now there's another task that you're supposed to do, but we're not actually gonna do. We'll get there, we'll get there, folks. But first, uh, if you've ever wanted to be a package, this game is great for simulating that. I would not suggest doing this in real life. I don't know how safe it is to go into sorters like this, but uh, the basic thing here is I'm going to be holding the direction of the conveyor belt. Um, and for this first one, it's purely an auto-scroller, but the other ones we need to know when to switch uh, the various colored boxes because this is a Game Boy Color game. You can now play this on the uh, monochrome Game Boy. Uh, to puzzles like this, kind of like in Link's Awakening DX, there's that like additional color dungeon that has like color puzzles. Anyways, uh, coming up is a very tricky, tricky line um, where we're going to try and meet a cycle for a camera. Um, so here we go. This one is a bit, bit spooky. Yeah, uh, we need to move at a specific line here, avoiding detecting by detection by guards here as well. We need to move fast because there's a camera and we need to reach the timer for that camera. Otherwise, we're gonna get spotted and got it. We made it, yeah. Uh, this one is actually way uh, stricter than you guys uh, thought. If you're like one second late, 
that camera is going to spot you, and then that's an alert, buddy. Yep. And you probably just noticed that I punched the elevator door to open the elevator. Uh, gracefully, they gave the elevator button some range to it. Um, and thanks to that range, because it's a Game Boy Color game, you know, you may not be able to quite tell where the panel is. Uh, we can punch from the right side and just punch the door. So whenever we're coming from the right side, I will punch the door instead of the uh, elevator button. Oh, uh, we have time for a couple quick donations. All right, we've got $10 from Anonymous who says, Yo, Plywood & Co., it might be early, but uh, Metal Gear Ghost Bagel, I mean, Babel, is a good way to start the morning. Uh, good luck. Wait, what was that noise? And we've got $500 from Blue Cheetah, who says, 400K, choo-choo. And... Speaking of which, we are less than $500 from hitting that $400,000 uh, total, so we're just nearly there. Very nice. Thank you for your generosity. Keep those donations coming, folks. If you can, if you can. So we just picked up the level three card. I'm gonna let this card pass. It's faster that way. And then very tight, one, two, this is not a hard room, but if you mess up your movement at all there, you're gonna get caught by the camera or the guard. So, again, another one of these situations where it's not hard, you just have to learn it, but if you don't know what to do the moment you go into the room, you're gonna get caught. I'm gonna do something that seems a bit bizarre here. I'm gonna hurt myself but this is to set up a death abuse that we'll be doing in this stage later on. Not quite yet. We have one more thing we need to pick up, the blue box. Mm -hmm. That is correct. There are three boxes in this game, by the way, in case you guys do not know. Yep, yellow, red, and blue. Uh, once you get the blue box, uh, if you play this game casually, that's when you get really confused because you just don't know where to go. Thankfully, as a speedrunner, we know exactly where we need to go. So that is not a concern. But uh, if you play this game casually, get ready to be stuck on stage five for a while trying to figure out which, which direction you're supposed to go. Uh, this game actually has a its, its fair share of puzzles, um, which I think is kind of in the 2D Metal Gear uh, standard, really. This room is really scary. One of the hardest rooms in the game. Ooh, that was close. Yeah. Always a heart stopper on that one, but we got through. That cycle is very tight. Also, uh, we picked up the stun grenade there, in case you guys are wondering. And that's the yeah. blue box. Yeah, this, those stun grenades are super important. Super important. Those are the only stun grenades I'm ever gonna pick up. Not because I don't want more stun grenades, but one of the side effects of playing on very hard is that they remove resources that would be on the lower difficulties, which uh, of course makes everything much more difficult when you're talking about resources throughout the whole run. Every resource that I use in this run matters. Uh, nothing is uh, used for granted whatsoever in this run because the uh, second to last boss in this game requires all kinds of explosives. So missing grenades, uh, missing bullets, uh, all that stuff, that does matter. So you have to be very aware of that as we uh, do this run on very hard. Uh, the other things with very hard, aside from guards doing more damage, just more guards, more cameras, is that uh, bosses have uh, different patterns. So for instance, Slasher Hawk, earlier on, his bird flew faster on very hard uh, compared to normal, let's say. We'll uh, go through those differences for those bosses as we go along, but this is our last conveyor belt trip. Uh, I'm going to use the blue box here to take a shortcut, and we're just going to alternate between blue and yellow. Uh, if you have a quick donation, this is a good time for one. And we've got Mallow with $50 who says, let's get to 400K. Let's, I agree. Let's 
Let's go. Let us go. If you're wondering what that box is, I still wonder. I, I, it's one of these unsolved mysteries. What is in that box? Because you can't actually access that normally. So, yeah. We are coming up to the dark room, uh, which you're supposed to go pick up thermo goggles for, but we're not going to do that. Instead, you're going to use death abuse because continues do not matter for Big Boss. You can do this. So I'm going to take myself out and I'll let Jack take over the rest. So inside the dark room, there are lasers here and their, move, their pattern is actually uh, fixed. However, uh, as long as we know when we can cross, there are like three lines of laser that we can cross. As long as we know when to cross, and with the combination of buffer punches, we will be able to cross uh, the laser room without two in our lives. Uh, thanks to Cloud for uh, finding that, Final Fantasy Tactics Runner, for finding that uh, and thermo there's skip. there's boy, Jimmy Harks, AKA the Tomato Man. And the reason I call him the Tomato Man, because the first time I played the game, I thought it was a tomato with legs walking around. No joke. <laughs> Metal Gear Tomato Man. Ghost tomatoes they sound delicious. So we're, we're down here. We're not going to meet up with Jimmy. That's very important, because that would screw up our checkpoints, and we wouldn't be able to do this thermo skip easily. Ooh, that was a little closer than I'd like. Okay. So yeah, we're gonna have to return all the way back to the conveyor belt area uh, since we've cut the C4 and we're gonna destroy a wall uh, close to Jimmy in order to meet him. And uh, we're gonna return to the same dark room and we're gonna do the same buffer punches uh, to access, to avoid getting spotted or touched by these lasers. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do another death abuse. We're gonna throw a grenade to the wall and throw ourselves just to reset the laser's pattern. So the first laser is uh, seven punches, I guess. And then we're gonna cross the second laser. And then we're gonna punch eight times here. And that's it. Keep in mind, they are extremely precise, so you need to uh, even like when you punch buffer, sometimes you might end up screwing it up, so you're gonna have to have a feeling for it before you can uh, continue or move forward. That's right. Um, that first punch buffer on the return trip is very tight. It's quite easy to get caught by the lasers on that one. And now we are going to pull out our C4, blow up the wall, and uh, Jimmy is going to be very taken aback, like, who the heck are you? What are you doing here? Why did you blow up that wall? What is going on? But we, we explained it all to him. Um, in the corner of the previous room we were in was the thermal goggles uh, that we skipped. And we completely avoided picking them up, but we do actually need them. Thankfully, the game designers planned on that, and Jimmy's actually going to give us his smuggled thermal goggles uh, in, uh, during this cutscene. So this is actually intended sequence break by the game. So when you thought it was a laser skip, it's actually, it's not. <laughs> the developer intended for it, for someone crazy enough to skip that room, like us. And uh, right now we're gonna start the next stage, stage six. This is where the whole uh, area that we were in uh, is gonna be dark. It's gonna be completely pitch dark. We're not gonna be able to see anything. This is where we're gonna have to use the thermal goggle that Jimmy is about to give us right now. And then we're gonna fight our second boss at the end of this stage. Yep, we'll be fighting the <clears throat> second member of Black Chamber, the Foxhound or Dead Cell of this game. And uh, I hope you like the color red because you're gonna be seeing a lot of red in this stage. Thank you, Jimmy. So our contact Chris will come and rescue Jimmy. We are gonna go head over to Metal Gear now, but to get there, we're gonna have to get through Marionette Owl. Now this card's sleeping, and it's very important to note that when they have that exclamation mark above their head, the yellow one, they can't actually see you, so it looks kind of weird that I just like ran by that guard, but that's why. Boom, 
knock him out. And now, also, oh, go ahead. Yeah, thankfully, uh, the cameras are disabled and uh, elevators are also disabled because it's uh, there's no power. But doors, for some reason, will open. Oh, one of the things we didn't actually mention is how this game innovates on the original 2D Metal Gear formula is uh, diagonal movement. I mean, we've mentioned like corner punching and moving on diagonal, but there was no diagonal movement in the other 2D Metal Gear games. And as you probably noticed at this point in the run, uh, diagonal moment movement is huge, hugely important. Really makes things a lot smoother in terms of the animation and the gameplay. That guard is knocked out. They can still see us. They have their own set of thermal goggles themselves, so you gotta be careful about that. And since the conveyor belts are stopped, we can just move along like this and just crawl under the sorters like so. Boom. And we're gonna wait out this car to move. Squeak on by. I have an announcement. Okay. We just hit that $400,000 total, everybody. Woo, Fantastic. good job, everyone. Fantastic. Woo, yeah! Just we'll, imagine we'll try to be our noise. own little, like, loud studio audience here. Woo! Yeah! Woo! Fantastic. Thank you I all so yell. much for your generosity. I would yell, but my wife would be angry at me. So. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep it on the hush-hush. Worth it. So now we are approaching Marionette Owl. The main gimmick of this fight is that Marionette Owl will hide among his dolls, uh, and you have to know which one of the dolls is him. If we shoot the wrong doll, and we, or rather if we shoot a doll and not Marionette Owl, the doll will explode into bullets and Marionette Owl will be healed. Uh, he only gets healed on very hard, so kind of kind of rough, very punishing. Um, mm -hmm. Thankfully, the start of this fight is predictable. I'm gonna do a, a certain movement to get three shots off. But after that movement, uh, Marinette Owl can do a variety of patterns. Some are good, some are bad. We're hoping we don't get a bad one here. So yeah, Marinette Owl uh, will disguise himself as the other dolls. He's a doll, uh, he controls dolls, by the way, so we need to be careful and pay attention to which doll that we need to shoot. Otherwise, if we end up shooting the wrong doll, uh, he's gonna heal up. And uh, right now, everything's going correctly. That's actually amazing. That was good. Yeah, very good fight. Uh, you know, there's a tendency in this game where a fight looks really easy <laughs> if it goes well, but it's sort of like the Fury at MGS3 where, like, if you watch a good Fury fight, you're like, what's the big deal? But sometimes the luck is not on your side and you have to know how to adjust. Uh, very good that we did not die to Marionette Owl because Marionette Owl wants to harvest Snake's bones to make him into a doll. This game can get a bit dark, <laughs> even though it's rated E for everyone. Yeah, a doll. You want to make Snake a doll. Hmm. Seems dark. Very dark. But as we go into stage seven, this is pretty much the halfway point of the run. Uh, and we have this infamous troll of a puzzle or not a puzzle. You can try to solve this puzzle all day, uh, and then a guard will eventually come by and just run through the doors. <laughs> Metal Gear Ghost Babble phones. Metal Gear Ghost Babble. Typical troll <laughs> kind of gameplay here. So this is a minefield. We gotta be very careful not to get blown up. So I just know where to go, and I go prone to crawl over the mines to pick them up. We're heading over to Metal Gear. We're gonna save the day. We're going to save the world, but wait a minute. It's never that simple, is it? The Havoc helicopter stopping us right in our path. By the way, we'll it's see. a Havoc. It's a Havoc, not a, not a Hindy. Havoc. Havoc. And here's Metal Gear Havoc. firing a warning missile, a nuke, into a testing site to say, we mean business. 
Um, if you're wondering about this Metal Gear, Metal Gear Gander, uh, it's actually based off of a prototype design for Metal Gear Rex uh, from Yoji Shinkawa, uh, the same Rex in Metal Gear Solid. Yoji Shinkawa also did the cover art for the North American release and, of course, the title screen. We're all, uh, Metal Gear fans typically are very gaga over uh, Shinkawa's arc, art. I certainly count myself among them. And look at Snake here. He's just standing in the middle of artillery blast. He's like, hmm, maybe I should start moving. Yeah, I think so. Oh, also, oh. please. <laughs> please. <laughs> no. <laughs> These He's artilleries are random, by the way, so we need to hopefully not get blasted by any of them. Uh, okay, we're good. So yeah, you can you can die actually here if you ended up getting a bad RNG by one of these artillery strikes. As I said before, their blasts they're like they're random and you can easily die. <laughs> there's nothing there's just nothing I could do about it. It could just happen. Um it's really funny when it does, because it doesn't lose you that much time, but it's just like, come on, game. Come on. You'll just get like chain stunned by uh, artillery strikes. Most of the time, I would say like 80%, 90% of the time, but you don't even get hit, but then there's those special moments when you do. So that guy just sped run a, a videotape, very impressive. I think he had like a 4.5, very impressive PB, but we are now going into a very hard set of stages, stage eight and stage nine. And Jack, what, what do you call stage eight? Stage hate. Stage hate. And hate? The reason why we call it stage hate is very simple. Uh, this is another one of these big gatekeepers in the run. We are going to be doing the biggest sequence break in this whole game called the Nikita skip. We'll be skipping picking up the Nikita on the second floor. And doing this skip is not for the faint of heart, especially when we're on very hard. Yeah, this Nikita skip saves like a few minutes, so it's definitely an important skip that we need to do on a run. Uh, in the meantime, while we're doing this stage, we're actually going to prepare ourselves for stage 9. There are going to be these pillars that we need to demolish. So while we're uh, moving throughout the whole stage, uh, we're going to have to look to these points where these pillars are going to end up spawning. Remember, the pillars in these games on this stage is actually random. So by the time we're actually continuing throughout the stage, we're going to have to look to these certain points and locate these pillars. There are going to be four pillars that we need to locate. So far, we have not found any of them, but we're going to have to locate them sooner or later because we're going to have to destroy them in stage nine by planting a C4 next to them. Yeah, so you might notice that I'm going to take some weird lines, and that's just for looking uh, at potential pillar spots. Uh, some of these puddles are electrified. Uh, that's why those guards were talking there. And this is one of the laggiest screens in the game. As you probably noticed, this game runs very smoothly, but on very hard, they've added some more guards. So right here, uh, okay. <laughs> that was really close. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here's a vent. We're gonna be crawling diagonally because Metal Gear Ghost Babble. Hopefully this is the one time we are in a vent because uh, crawling through vents is very slow. Very, very slow. Next screen, though, is spooky. There's a very tight uh, cycle I'm going to try and make with a buffer. Okay, we did it. Well, the right. first part. <laughs> now, avoiding getting caught by this guard. And I'm going to check for a pillar spot here. Okay, that's not a spot. Turn up, knock that guard out, and I'm going to cause an explosion to run through a puddle, but unless a guard actually spots me, this does not count as an alert. They know something's up, but until they actually see me, this is not an alert. Kind of weird. Yeah, remember, it's not an alert, it's being found. So, exactly. That's the criteria here. I don't think I've seen any pillars yet. Yeah, me too. There are no pillars. Uh, I wonder if they are all on the top floor. 
wait out the alert. You can cheese alerts by going back and forth uh, at a screen. So use that there. Now it's time for the main event, folks. The Nikita oh, skip. Oh boy. It is time. So the Nikita skip. Uh, so this is by far the biggest gatekeeper of the run, and hopefully Bio is going to do it successfully, and I believe in him. So Thank you. what we are going to do, uh, first of all, we're going to plan a C4 uh, next to a specific spot, and then we're going to detonate that C4 and uh, cross the electric floor. We need to be precise in our location, otherwise it will not work. And that's not it. That's the first part. Uh, there's another part coming up soon. But let's see, plywood right now, he's going to plant that C4 right there. And then he's going to equip the chat grenade immediately. He's going to detonate. Now he is on the, the cross, but that's good. He's using the chat grenade to disrupt these turrets. These are turrets, by the way. Now he's going to continue forward and he's going to equip the stun grenade in preparation for the next area. Okay, that's a bad RNG, but thankfully Plywood was able to pay attention for that. He's gonna plant another C4, destroy the wall. It's really important to keep the alert going on. Otherwise, if the alert fades in, uh, we're gonna end up getting another alert, and it's gonna count uh, throughout the alert uh, time. That's one. gonna get here. Okay, we have found one of the pillars. Here's the second part of the Nikita skip. He's gonna position himself. Hopefully the other guard is gonna shoot it. That is beautiful. He's gonna use a stun grenade, and that's it. That was beautiful. This is actually quite one of the scariest part of the one, and Flywood was able to execute it perfectly. I'm gonna clap for that. Thank you. But, but Thank we're you. not done yet. We're There's not gonna done be another yet. boss. We, we yeah. can talk more about the Nikita skip, but we got Pyro Bison. This guy is all about the fire, and we are going to be setting up some mines and baiting him into some damage and then using his iframes to shoot him repeatedly. Here we go. So yeah, uh, we're going to plant these mines on the way, and then at the main time, we're going to pick up more ammo for the assault rifle. Sorry, grenades here. Okay, and we're going to sneak behind him, and then we're going to shoot him on the back. All right. Uh, it's actually a really, really precise to shoot him on the back, so uh, we need to look for visual cues in order to learn when I shoot, and we need to keep on shooting at him. It's basically almost close to a frame perfect, and we're gonna keep on repeating and shooting at him. And that's it, that's Pyro Bison. That was a really that was, clean stage. Eight. That was actually one of the <laughs> cleanest stages that I have ever seen. I've been speedrunning this game for two years, and that was actually quite perfect. Mwah. I would kiss you, Plywood, but you're on the other side of the world. <laughs> well, thankfully, the internet is bringing us together, Jag. Yeah, that is correct. And that's it. That's stage eight. Coming up is going to be stage nine. This is the time we're going to have to locate more pillars. So far, we have found one. So we need to find the extra, the other three. And we're going to have to plant that C4 next to them. Uh, in order to continue and detonate this whole place, because that's the objective of the stage nine, to destroy this whole place. Yep, so Pyro Bison revealed some juicy details for the story. We haven't really been explaining the story, but uh, if you ask me, it's a very great story as far as Metal Gear is concerned. It is definitely on the darker side. It's written entirely by uh, Fukushima, who uh, co-wrote MGS1 and MGS2 with Hideo Kojima. Uh, there's often a misconception that Kojima was not involved in this game. That's not true. He executive produced it. But the director of this game, Shinta Nojiri, later went on to direct the Metal Gear Acid games on PSP. Mm -hmm. uh, please, if you did not play this game, please give it a try. It's actually one of the good Metal Gear games. So you own it to yourself. If you are a fan of Metal Gear games, you own it to yourself to play this game. Yeah, I mean, we're only showing the main game, but there's a whole set of VR missions. There's special versions of each stage that you can speedrun. Uh, there's a whole radio play that's hidden in the game. You can't access it on the North American release, unfortunately, but the PAL release, yes. Uh, this game is jam-packed with content. That's why it's so highly rated, um, uh, highly well-reviewed and praised uh, at the time of release. So it's not underappreciated, it's just overlooked. Also, one more thing, it has multiplayer. I mean, that's the probably first the first Metal, Metal Gear, Gear game, game with multiplayer. Yeah, it has multiplayer with like the connection uh, between the two Game Boy Colors and there's Deathmatch, there's other stuff as well. It's 
definitely one of the good Metal Gear games. That's right. So, so <laughs> unlike before, Snake's like, I can't, I, I can't go through this floor. I can't do that. We're gonna have to blow up these pillars. So, I'm, I'm feeling like we're about to get deep basement. Yeah, looks like it. So far, we have not found any of the other pillars. So far, we only find one. Just uh, being careful here. Okay. All right, deep basement. Okay, we got the second one. That's deep basement. Now we need to find the other two. Deep basement is a bad RNG because it's gonna we're gonna have to like walk all the way to the inside of that basement and plant a C4 there. Uh, so yeah, it's, if you end up getting with good uh, pillar placement, you might end up saving minutes. And here's the third pillar here. We're gonna plant the C4 that we have. Interesting enough, you cannot use C4 at uh, this particular stage for some reason because they're actually going to be only used for uh, the pillars. Yeah, if you try to stages. like place it now, it's going to say, no, you need every C4 you, you have, which is a, it's honestly a good feature that you don't waste C4 that way, especially on this difficulty where they just say, you don't get anything. We're on very hard. You get nothing, and you're going to like it. All right, did we get the infamous spot? We did this. All right, that means last spot is over here. On the left side, which is actually slow. Uh, yeah, so far we have found two. Wait, two? Yeah. We have found two. Uh, now we need to find the other two as well. Yeah, so... I'm gonna go pick up these C4 since I have the option to. We threw okay, a chap yep. there to avoid getting shot. I wish I didn't have to use the chap there, but whenever I have to go into that area, um, it's just the reality of the situation. You have to, um, with with this stage, you have to be able to know also, <laughs> that floor isn't really electrified. You have to just know with this stage what, uh, through process of elimination and from, from checking all spots where you have to go, so since we've already eliminated all the other spots I knew was over there. And now we just have to go into the basement to plant the final C4. That's what's really tricky about this stage is because you can get so many different patterns, most of them are bad, uh, you have to be able to adjust your movement accordingly, uh, which can be tricky. It can be tricky. Um, I think we have time for a couple donations while we go get this last yeah, spot. Go for it. All right. Twenty dollars from UGamer81 who says, "Hey, Plywood, loved your MGS run earlier in the show, and Ghost Babble is probably my favorite lesser-known Metal Gear. Great run so far, and keep up the great work." Thank you. $25 from Robobo, who says, Hey everyone, Solid TV Snake Tano here, the internet's quickest Metal Gear speedrunner. I couldn't do that uh, impression justice. Uh, let's see. Oh, I got caught. That's okay. That's okay. So yeah, we lost an alert, uh, but we're fine since we have that freebie alert, so we should be completely fine. Now the whole area is, is about to explode, uh, so we're gonna have to run away and make it all the way to the exit, which is the entrance of this area. Yep, so we're gonna see random rubble falling from the ceiling. Where the rubble falls is completely RNG. I have no control over that. The fire is completely static. Uh, the rocks do less damage than the fire. Fire does quite a bit of damage, actually. Still gotta avoid these electrified puddles, though. And, oh, oops. I went a little bit too sharp on that turn. That's okay. And uh, we're doing the thing you should never do in a collapsing building. Don't ride the elevator. It's just that they have no safety regulations, so. Uh, <laughs> we're taking the elevator while the building is on fire yep. and collapsing. No stairs. In case of emergency, do not take the elevator. Exactly. Here's a small here, here, nice little damage boost. That's right. Uh, remember, folks, as long as you get your life back after every stage, it's all good. And boom, 
we're out of stage nine. We took an extra alert. I shouldn't have knocked out that guard. I should have waited for him to turn. It's my bad, but it's okay. We'll be able to uh, recover because uh, as long as I don't take another uh, found, we're fine. We can still uh, make Big Boss and we are still on Big Boss pace, which Mm -hmm. I am kind of surprised. <laughs> this run is so punishing, and one little mistake could just set off a chain of reaction. So, oh, mm -hmm. we need a, we have another, uh, we have another uh, tape speed run. Boom, three seconds. Yeah, uh, this game is actually one of the uh, hardest games to get a big boss rank, even casually. I mean, even speedrunning wise, I mean, we always struggle to get a big boss rank. And Plywood was able to execute this really perfectly, actually. I'm so surprised and proud of him. And I guess we have more for a couple of donations. Yep. Right. $6.13 from Matt Advance, who says, Best of luck to Plywood. As someone who didn't have a PlayStation, uh, Ghost Babble was my only way to play a Metal Gear game. Shout out to all the runners and Ricky Big Dog. Bot who got me into GDQ. Everyone, please drop an F in chat for Jimmy, who uh, got blown up. And, uh, yeah, those were not the kind of cufflinks that you want at Christmas. Let me tell you. I'm going to use mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always wanted uh, to use this. Yeah, yep. we have a boy genius getting blown up. Rated E for everyone, by the way. And we already know... I mean, what's on the back of the box? Just animated violence? Yeah, okay. Animated violence. You know what else is uh, in this game? There's an alcohol reference, like, literally in the first few lines of dialogue on the intro. There, there's no reference to that on the on the uh, ESRB. Okay. We have time for a couple more donations after my little rant. So $25 from Slappy Smith who says, good luck, Plywood, nothing but love to you and everybody over at the MGSR. Thank you, Slappy. What exactly is the MGSR before I'm... Oh, that is Metal Gear Speedrunners. That is the community for Metal Gear Speedrunning. Uh, you can find us over at MetalGearSpeedrunners.com if you'd like to join up and learn one of these games or just hang out. Excellent. $5 from Anonymous who says... Now I want a bagel. I don't have any bagels. Or any cream trees. So here's five dollars. Those five dollars, you could definitely get a nice bagel sandwich. Thank you. Thank you. Now I've made everyone hung hungry. You're welcome. But uh, coming up now is the Havoc helicopter. And we are picking up some grenades beforehand. We're about to fight the second in command, Sophie Nadram, of this uh, this group. And this fight, uh, we want to see good luck by seeing the missiles launch rather than the machine gun along the top here. Here we go. So, Havoc can wreck Havoc to the one. Uh, it's kind of random fight. This missile that is shooting right now is kind of random. We need to avoid it because it has a big glass radius, and we can lose like half of our health when we got hit by it. Uh, Pilot is using the grenade uh, at the uh, at the Havoc Assault, and that's the first phase. Now it's gonna go to the left shoot. It went to the left, and he's gonna keep on throwing grenades as well while taking uh, behind the rock, uh, standing behind the rock, avoiding the bullets. Uh, one more grenade left, and that was actually quite beautiful. You want to beat Havoc before it finish off his. Uh, the left side movements, otherwise we'll go into Bob Martin's um, attack and that wastes a huge amount of time. So beating it before that is actually quite beautiful. Well done. Celebratory bagel bite. Excellent. So yeah, and uh, that's... Uh, Sovia, now Snake is about to shoot her with his pistol that we never picked up. I wonder where he got that pistol from. Oh, he's going to do some wonderful CQC here off screen, of course. She thinks she has us. She's like, ha, you thought you, you had me now. I have a gun. And then explosion. 
And Snake being the talented man he is. I think the tables have turned. But Snake is a merciful man. We are not actually going to shoot Sophie because we're impressed with her sad sap story, as you typically get in Metal Gear games. Oh, for those wondering about the ranking system in this game, it's mostly based off of speed. Uh, there are five ranks. Excellent, great, good, poor, and terrible. <laughs> terrible. If you play this game for the first time, you will probably get a lot of terribles. Um, this game does not mince words. I just wish we got to keep the gun because we took the gun from Sophie and he just throws it away. It's ridiculous. I haven't picked up the pistol this whole run and he just throws it away. So we are now in stage 11, just three more stages to go. And this is the base, the actual base built on the remains of the base in Metal Gear 1 where Metal Gear was stored. And we pick up the Nikita. Thankfully, it spawns here. <laughs> Miraculously, it spawns. Uh, which we can kind of owe to the uh, stage ILs because uh, when you play the individual level of this stage, the Nikita spawns in that spot. Oh, all right, big boss is over. I wanted to tell you do not do that, Strats, because usually that's what happened. Oh my God, just go against the wall. Oh well. Yep. So this is another, the second Nikita skip. This one is way easier than the first one. I'm probably just gonna use a Nikita here to destroy the panel. And there we go. And then we're going to continue forward and pick up uh, key card number five by just after destroying this wall in front of us. Well, this wall, we're going to pick up this key card and then throw a grenade at this panel. Uh, there's a reason why this is also an Akita skip is that you're supposed to go around uh, take some extra trips, but we don't have to take multiple trips through here. So that helps a lot. Oh, where am I oh, going? Oh, you forgot the Nikita. Yeah. Uh, there's another panel that we need to destroy using the Nikita. Before we can I'm all shook up. I'm all shook up. But it's okay. Yeah. Really, really bad towards the big boss rank. This now, I mean, this one was beautiful. I mean, we just lost it. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just keep on going and focus on throughout the rest of the run. That's right. That's right. Now, technically, I could have taken a death to remove the alert, but uh, I'm not I'm not about the pride here. We're about uh, going fast, so that's the dealio. Uh, we're going to knock out these guards and head on into floor 50. Also worth mentioning, stage 11 is actually the longest stage in the game. It's probably casual. It's going to take over an hour just to beat it. We're gonna do this in 11 minutes. And that's because of how big this stage is actually is. There's like two long elevators that we need to take and a boss fight at the end of it. Yeah, we have a 50 floor elevator and then a 48 floor elevator. And eventually get down to the 100th floor, which is connecting back to the original Metal Gear because uh, Metal Gear in original Metal Gear uh, was at the bottom of a 100 floor elevator ride. It didn't feel like that in the game, but story-wise, it was a 100-floor elevator, so this is a great time for some donations. All right. I want to bring back the haikus here. We got someone who says, uh, wait, we were doing haikus? That's his name for $5. <laughs> their name, sorry. Um, says, speedrunning is cool. Wait, we are doing haikus? How do I write one? I got Tessa11 who says haiku for those, uh, $15, who says haiku for those struggling. How do you haiku? Is it really that hard to? I don't think it is. Anyone can haiku. Anyone can speedrun, anyone can haiku. This guard, though, uh, is taking his own unique path through this minefield, sort of like Meryl in Metal Gear Solid. But just like in Meryl Metal Gear Solid, we are not taking this path. It's it's inefficient. 
We, we, we have better pathing, better routing for this room. Go prone there to avoid the mine, and boom, we're out of there. And now for a pretty scary room in this run, this laser room, I'm gonna wait for those, yeah. The pattern here is not set, so I never trust if a laser is gone when I enter a room, because the moment you walk, you'll probably run into it. Ooh, Boom. That was close. All right, since we've already lost Big Boss, oh, man. we are gonna just run through the lasers here for speed purposes. Boom. Uh, if we wanted to maintain Big Boss, we would have went through the left side and uh, dodged all the lasers. I need the, uh, I need the thermos. I shouldn't replace those. There we go. So yeah, this is the C4 bomb run, and it's gonna have one of the scariest and coolest looking dodges as long as I actually get it uh, coming up in a couple of rooms. Well, we're picking up more C4s on the way here. Although I don't think you need to pick that up anymore because uh, we already picked up the one on stage nine. It's true, Except but so I don't want to remember the other <laughs> path for that room. So entering this room, this is a beautiful, ah, that was great. So the fact that you can like dodge all these four soldiers without getting hit is actually kind of amazing in itself. Also, it's really important, especially when you're doing big boss runs, to keep the alert keep on going on. Otherwise, if you end up getting another alert, uh, you will lose big boss ranks. So uh, you need to keep it as long as possible until we pick up key card number six. And coming up here is gonna be uh, an alert four. We're gonna use the Nikita. We're gonna destroy the panel on the other side and pick up key card number six. And Clive is gonna equip the stun grenade and we're gonna use it to stun the three upcoming guards here. Beautiful, that was great. Now we're gonna exit the room and then we're gonna enter the room on the left side. This will uh, remove the alert and there we go. Nice. That went quite well. Very happy about that. Um, like Jag was mentioning, it's very key when you're on pace to uh, not go into the yellow, the evasion rank uh, for the alert, because if you reinitiate the alert, that's a second alert. So very key there to avoid that. Yeah, there's a lot of technicality when you speed on this game, especially when you go into big boss rank. So now we're done with this floor, we're gonna go down here. We're gonna wait for the soldiers to turn around and then we're gonna sneak behind him and then we're gonna take another elevator. And it's a long one as well. Yep, another 48, <laughs> well, two fewer floors. How nice of the game. Uh, so this is a great time for some more donations. We've got $7 from Sauls Wazlib, who says, Good morning from Australia. Glad to be able to watch such an amazing run of an amazing game. Special shout-outs to Typhonium, who's sitting next to me. Thank you for introducing me to the amazing series that is Metal Gear. I Need Scissors, 61. Donation goes to Announcer's Choice, and keep up the good work. Thank you. dollars from Marn who says GDQ always seems to come around when I need it most and watching all the great runners while I'm working from home this week is really lifting my spirits. Thanks for the hype. Awesome. Thank you very much guys for your donation. Keep them coming. So here uh, we're going to pick up more ammo. All of these ammo is pretty much for in preparation for the boss fight um, Metal Gear Gander which is you guys can see him right now down there. And uh, before that, there's going to be another boss fight before him that we can have to defeat him as well. And we're coming up to the epic last set of bosses for this game. Um, there's actually a cool little Easter egg coming up that I think we have time to show. So I think we'll I think we'll go ahead and show it. Um, I don't think we're, we're behind on time, really. 
Yeah, go for uh, it, since we already lost big boss rank. <laughs> Don't remind me! <laughs> Don't remind me! <laughs> oh, I'm gonna remind uh, you for it. Oh, man, I, I, I'm gonna have to live with that for the rest of my life! <laughs> Anyways, um, so we're on floor 100, and if you go to the left here... You may recognize this if you played the original Metal Gear. It's the remains of the original Metal Gear. Uh, if you call Colonel Campbell, he'll actually talk to you about it, and you'll reminisce about what happened uh, at Outer Heaven. But we need to go to the right side to go take care of the threat. So up here is the 5.7 pistol. We could have picked this up... Uh, in stage one, all the way at the start of the run, but uh, we wait until the very end to pick it up. Pick up that ration just in case. We're very set on rations, I might add. And uh, here we go. This is Blackheart's Viper. He is the leader of Black Chamber, and he has a mechanical arm, which if you've played uh, Metal Gear Solid 5, that might be a little bit familiar to you. Uh, he's all about revenge. He's very angry. Look at his, his Game Boy Color scowl. So, this fight, uh, I'm going to be, in a very simplistic sense, I'm going to be holding diagonals and shooting this guy and following him around the room, but it's going to look a little bit weirder than that. This fight is actually very deceptive. As you see these white lines, this pretty much tells you that you cannot go through them while he disappears. So right now he cannot, he cannot go through them. Pretty much telling you uh, that to avoid them, otherwise it's gonna explode in your face. And right now, what we need to do uh, is keep on going and shooting Viper from far away while avoiding the disappearing white lines. Otherwise we're gonna end up getting blasted more shot and that was actually a good boss fight that was very good 8 16 on the clock and we are now entering stage 12 where we will be fighting metal gear so uh, yeah, we have some time for a few few donations if you got them. all right we've got ten dollars from dash rando who says gotta donate for the real babel the real bagel boss plywood we've got ten dollars again from domino 22 who says choo choo and we've got troll rex coming in on the limerick side who says we can't just have haikus with $20. Can't just have haikus. Let's mix it up. There once was a runner for Metal Gear who wanted to show his cool run here. So he tried for Big Boss, and that was a loss. He's keeping this run in high gear. <laughs> Keep it up, Plywood. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Nice, nice. Wonderful, wonderful. So, uh, we're coming into... Metal Gear. Uh, this is one of the best songs in the game. Uh, Sorry, please. It, uh, the music in this game is frankly incredible. Uh, we have some supplies to pick up uh, because there are two phases to this Metal Gear, and it is certainly the hardest Metal Gear of the 2D games. Because this thing is a tank. And Actually, we'll in the whole the Metal Gear series, in my opinion, it's the hardest. And, yeah, so, just like I Plywood said, uh, there are two phases for Metal Gear Gander. The first phase is going to follow you and going to try to stomp you with its leg. Uh, during that, we're going to try and put C4s uh, on, the, uh, on the ground and detonate them uh, as soon as one of the legs touch them in order to do damage. And that's what we're going to do for the first phase. You can use C4, you can use... Uh, uh, you can pretty much use the mines if you do not have C4. But C4 is by far the best option. Also, we need to avoid getting shots. And if we are too late with our movements, there's going to be fire coming up from the top of the screen. Okay, we got... All right, that's good. A few more C4s. 
Really good legs. Really good legs. That's a good phase one. Uh, this one is, this phase is actually quite easy. It's not that hard. But the second one is where things are going to become really, really intense. Um, because it's actually going to be really, really a long fight, and we need to focus on the majority of it. So here, the game is pretty much showing you the weak points of Metal Gear Gander by these red circles. The turrets, the shoulders, and the missile module on the back. We need to damage those in order to uh, damage Gander. So first of all, Pirate is going to go to the right side. He's going to equip the grenades. And then he's going to start chucking grenades at the turrets. And uh, based on the RNG that we're going to end up getting, uh, right now we get some bad RNG. Uh, there are these, these red drones that are shooting out at us that we're going to have to avoid getting shot. And after that, in a little bit, uh, Gander is going to open his shoulder. We're going to damage it with the Nikita that we have here. Uh, the shoulders takes up to like four Nikita missiles, so they're, we're gonna keep on doing the same process for the right shoulder first. Chucking grenades at the turret, and once the shoulder opens up, we're gonna use a Nikita missile ladder to damage it. So far, two shots. And there's the third shot. We're gonna keep on throwing these grenades. You can see we're pretty much lowering the health a little bit. Now the right shoulder is gone, we're gonna go to the left side, we're gonna do the same thing as well. Okay, that's the first Nikita shot. We're gonna keep on chucking grenades at the turret itself. Right now, Gander is shooting its missiles at you. We need to avoid these missiles, they do a huge amount of damage, almost half of your health. Uh, Biot is gonna do, uh, are you gonna do it? Uh, the, the pause buffer? I guess, no. Not I for the first one. It. It's for the second one, because the first one's predictable, but... For the second one, I'm going to be pause buffering to avoid damage. Yeah, uh... Also, we're damaging the missile modules with the Nikita. It does a huge amount of damage compared to the other, uh, spots, weak spots. And then we're gonna keep on doing the same as we did, throwing grenades into the turret and using the Nikita to destroy the shoulder. And we're gonna keep on doing this until uh, this phase is pretty much done. Okay, one more Nikita missile to the shoulder. We're out of the grenades, now we're gonna have to wait. Okay, now the missile model is open, it's gonna shoot a missile at it. This is gonna lower its health. And then we're gonna pick up some grenades on the way. Using pause buffer to pretty much predict the... Oh my god, that's, that's unfortunate. I mean, since we already lost Big Boss rank, it's not a big deal, we can use rations, but... I mean, if you have Big Boss base, I'm gonna careful. try and still maintain the ration requirement here, if I can. These fire patterns are completely random, so there's a lot of different patterns you can get here. I gotta keep on picking up grenades, and keep my cool... Ow. Oh... Come on, we, we did it. There we go, that was beautiful. No ration used. And that is Metal Gear Gander. That was actually great. Very nice fight. Maintain composure. Um, that fight can go a lot of different ways. Those UAVs that come out, those turrets, they can give a bunch of different patterns. Uh, having the missile attack is always nerve-wracking because after the first one, it's pretty unpredictable and you gotta be on your toes and you know that fight has a pretty wide variance in terms of how fast it can go um, but we are through the hardest of the hard uh, stage 13 is actually a uh, pretty simple by comparison uh, we'll be fighting black arts viper one more time because he has a, a secret technique that this uh, metal gear has if it reaches the surface it'll launch uh, basically communicate with a satellite and launch nukes. So we need to stop Viper beforehand, stop this horrific plot from taking place. Uh, yeah. For this fight, um, he's going to be spawning in various locations after we hit him once. Um, we can deny certain spawns from happening, but we can't deny them all. So essentially I'm going to be going left and right over and over again to... Uh, see where he is. Uh, he isn't really going to be fighting us. He's just trying to uh, run down the clock, which I don't like that whatsoever. So we're going to try and take him out as fast as possible.
Yeah, this fight is actually quite simple as long as you know where he's... as long as you can predict where he's gonna end up spawning. Uh, the first... Uh, usually he's gonna spawn on the down left side. At the beginning of the fight, we're gonna approach him and shoot him with the pistol that we just picked up here. And no, he's on the right side. So we're gonna shoot him, wait a little bit, and then we're gonna head to the next, the other side, the left side. And then we're gonna rinse and repeat. So there's like this set pattern that you need to do. And if you do it correctly, he's gonna spawn at the same exact location. Just like that. I'm going up here to hopefully get some good RNG. Didn't happen. Uh, try to get him to spawn right below me. Uh, it doesn't always happen, though. Oop, do not hit me. His his attack does half your life, so it's not something I want to get uh, familiarized with. And time is coming up. Time is when stage 13 text comes up on screen. And time. Ooh. That was beautiful. That was a good run. <laughs> I, I'm honestly a little bit emotional because that run went really well. Um, I can't. I can't emphasize how much difficulty is in this run. Um, and frankly, this is one of my favorite games and it, it was what a pleasure to be able to share with all of you with Jaguar King. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uh, I wanted to do a few shout outs. Um, shout outs to LCC for finding the Nikita skip. Um, shout outs to Bad Humans. Unfortunately, we had some tech issues. He couldn't, uh, participate in the commentary for this run but uh he's done a lot for this game um shout outs to all the vr runners because we've learned a lot about this game through vr uh, vr is a lot of fun on its own of course i want to thank jag for commentating with me um mm. and uh, no problem, of course to, <laughs> thank you um and of course to the whole metal gear speedrunners community uh if you're interested in learning any of these games uh, you can check us out at MetalGearSpeedRunners.com. Um, if you want to learn this game, I'd love to have you. Uh, this category, this difficulty, like I said, not for the faint of heart, but um, if you want to run normal, very hard, the VR missions, whatever, um, we're here for you. Um, so, yeah, thank you all so much for your donations and generosity. And... Um, I hope you all have a wonderful West rest of your weekend and week with uh, SGDQ 2020 online. Thank you. Plywood, did you see the time? It was a 119.53. All right, everybody. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna cut to a Twitch ad real quick uh, before we set up the next run. All right. All right, we're gonna cut to a Twitch ad before we go to the next run.
and welcome back everybody to summer games done quick 2020 Once again my name is dr bob tastic and i'll be continuing my host run for the next run of neon boost from kiki sis uh 